is a bell beaker. So called because it is a beaker, aka a cup of some sort, and it's called a bell beaker because some have suggested if you invert it like so, it looks a little bit like a bell. They were found in grave sites throughout the whole of the European continent as well as Northern Africa around the late Neolithic Early Bronze Age, more on that in later videos. What's interesting is that even though they're found alongside a lot of other artifacts, for example wrist guards from archery, copper daggers, a lot of ornamentation, for example uh, gold, they're actually considered so varied and so widespread that they are actually used as the naming of a cultural complex known as the Bell Beaker culture. And for this reason, they're considered one of the earliest examples of a popular culture that we see in the archeological record. Even though they're very varied across this wide geographic range, there are three main distinctive styles that have been identified. The first is the all over decorated type, which you can see a bit of an example of here, this range of decoration, which it's assumed would have been made by applying a comb to create this decoration into the wet clay. The second is all over corded decoration, which is similar, except rather than using a comb, you would have used a rope or some kind of cord to imprint the clay with. And the third is a maritime type, which is very similar, except you have bands with a range of different decoration types in them. It's unsure when exactly the first bell beaker was discovered because of course they weren't called bell beaker for quite a long time. The first use of the term bell beaker was by Lord John Abercrombie in his manuscript documenting all the different pottery types in the British Isles in 1912. Since then, they've however been a subject of a lot of debate. One of the main debates is about the origins of the bell beaker. Where did the bell beaker culture first emerge from and when? The oldest site that we have that has been defined as bell beaker comes from Portugal and dates to around 2750 BC. Incidentally, the latest site that we have comes from the UK and dates to around 1800 BC. Although the latest site that we have from the rest of the region, so mainland Europe, Northern Africa, comes from around 2200 BC. So it seems they were carrying on in the British Isles for a lot longer. However, this concept of origins is something that's very difficult to identify archaeologically because of course it's not as if there was no bell beaker culture one day and then suddenly the next day, here they were, the bell beakers. So it's something that's a lot more nuanced and it's something that probably happened over a longer period of time. One of the most astounding things about bell beakers is how widespread they are. Even though there is a lot of stylistic variation, as I mentioned before, they are still what can be defined as a bell beaker, this rough shape. However, exactly where they started is, as I said, a matter of a lot of debate. We see, for example, the earliest site in Portugal, and actually the earliest examples that we have of the maritime type design come from the Iberian Peninsula. So it has been suggested that that is also the emergence point of the entire bell beaker cultural phenomenon. However, the earliest examples of the all over corded pattern that we see come from more central Europe. This could therefore suggest that actually that design is more of a diffusion of ideas from the earlier corded ware culture, which is a separate different culture that first emerged and was around from between 3100 BC and 2500 BC. So whether or not the culture actually emerged from one single point and then kind of spread out from there is one theory. However, another theory is that it's actually the bell beaker cultural phenomenon as we know it is actually a mixture of different ideas from lots of different cultures scattered throughout the region. There's a famous saying in archaeology, which is that pots are not people. And this, for example, in this case, could refer to that idea that people look at the bell beaker and think, ah, they were relatively homogenous throughout this very wide geographic range and time period. Therefore, the people who made and used them must have also been one homogenous culture, the bell beaker culture. However, DNA studies have suggested that this is not the case and that the people who made and used these pots may have actually been more varied than we might suggest. Therefore, the term culture is often now being put aside and instead people are using terms like the bell beaker complex or the bell beaker phenomenon. When in the archaeological record we see the emergence of a large complex culture, it's often assumed that this was due to migration, so the movement of people from one area to another, taking their objects or their knowledge with them. However, recent studies have suggested that with the bell beaker this may not have in fact been the case, and instead the success of the bell beakers is due not to people actually moving and interbreeding, but instead people from different cultures interacting with each other and exchanging their views, their opinions, and more importantly their ideas on how to interact with their material world. <laughs>